Hello, my name is Luis Toledo. I work for Schneider Electric as a trainer for protection relays. Today I would like to show to you how with a very easy way we can configure a 60850 communication configuration. I will first show how to activate the protocol itself. After that I will activate signals required from the application. I will define datasets, report control blocks, I will make a goose configuration and I will after that configure the matrices where we are using the goose signals. For an example, the first thing we will do is a vertical communication. So we will use the device name ID underscore one and we will make a configuration that it will provide a client phase currents IL1 to 3 and phase voltage UL1 to 3 uh, with an unbuffered report control block and we will configure object 1 control and status and first stage overcurrent protection as a buffered report control block uh, to the client. We will define another device ID underscore 2 to publish uh, two goose signals. One is a digital input and the other one is uh, overcurrent first stage activation and we will use that goose signals for um, digital input to activate an LED on the front and for the overcurrent stage we will use it to block the overcurrent stage of the upstream relay ID 01. So what we need to do, we need to configure protocol and Ethernet parameters. We need to configure ID names. Uh, we need to take into the use signals which we are going to use. We have to define them for the data sets. Uh, we preferably will define measurement thresholds uh, so uh, we can uh, limit the activation of the measurement is case of small changes. We will configure buffer report control blocks and unbuffered report control blocks. We will configure the goose publishing parameters. We will uh, configure the goose subscribing parameters. We will configure the output matrix. After that, it is possible to do uh, testing and analyzing with, with for instance, Wireshark uh, analyzing tool. So the first step, I will go to the protocol configuration menu. I will se select the protocol configuration. I will uh, uh, enable the communication port for Ethernet port. I will uh, add the IP address. Uh, I will put the net mask. And if we would need to have use for gateway or FTP server or so on, I would add this uh, device. Then I will go to the Ethernet protocol number one. I will define IC61850. All the other parameters in this menu, we can leave as they are. Don't only need to be modified in special occasions. After that, I need to send the changes or the selection of the protocol to the relay and the relay will ask uh, approval for reboot and we have to answer yes in order to um, activate the menu we need to further configure after the relay are rebooted and we read uh, the view uh, we can find a lot of new menus based on our protocol uh, choice so the first uh, venue to go to is IC6050 main configuration. The most important parameter here is the ID name. So I will give the name ID underscore one. Next menus, you will have uh, the signals and in uh, ECTP3 relay range, uh, you need to set every signal you want to use in use and uh, then you have three fixed data sets where you can define which signals you want to use so we will go through this uh, data map and uh, 
uh, look for the signals we are planning to use. Uh, we will put it in use and we will use dataset 2. Uh, from page 5 you can find uh, object uh, 1. Uh, we will define that uh, as a buffer, so we will put it in a separate dataset. We will put it in object, object 1 in dataset 1 and we will choose it into use. In page uh, 11 we will have uh, voltages. So we will then put also in the set F1 to, to have it as a buffer and we put it in use. In page 6 we have the overcurrent function and we want to have that in the buffer control. So we will activate in the set 1 and put it into the use. Uh, now we have selected all the signals uh, we need. Uh, so the next step would be that we go to the measurement configuration. In measurement configuration, we can define the threshold of the current, which means of the measurement, which means that level up to change a certain amount before we create an event uh, and update the dataset. In this case, we have a current threshold of 10 amp. Uh, we can leave it like that, and we have a voltage of 1000 amp, so we could lower that. We put it to 10 volt. As well. Uh, next step would be to configure the, the control blocks. So we can see that uh, the buffer control block is defined to dataset 1. So as conclusion now I have configured uh, that uh, uh, dataset 1 will, will be connected to buffer report control block 1 and dataset 2 we will configure for the uh, unbuffer report control block uh, 1. And we go next to the boost configuration. So this relay is the IED1. So it will receive the boost signal from uh, uh, another ID 2 which we have to configure later. We will only do the subscriber configuration. So in this menu we will enable the subscribing and we will uh, we can define the MAC addresses we can receive from five different MAC addresses and subscribing we can receive maximum 64 signals from several other devices as boost message and we can receive five analog signals. In this case we need to know the publisher, MAC address, application ID, and configuration revision. As well as we will need to separate messages inside the boost block with the data index. And we will put it into the use. In the publishing relay, we will, in the main configuration, define the ID name. And uh, this exercise, we will use the ID underscore two. In the data map, Page 2, we will use the digital input for publishing. In this case, we don't need to define it to any other data set. We will just put it into the use. For our current function, we also want it to publish. We already have it in, into the use. We don't need to define it into the data set in this relay. And it, so I will use a virtual input and I will activate this one. In order to make that configuration, I will go to the logic function. I have already defined here, so I have uh, I greater than start, it goes to an end gate and it goes to a logical output. So when the start signal occur, uh, we will have an activation of the logical output one. Then I go back to my uh, uh, 6150 configuration and I will select the data points. Now I need to select which signals I want to publish. So I will uh, click on it and select. So digital input one, I can define directly. And I will choose the virtual for logic one, which will 
equal to the total inputs and after that these signals will be belong to the, the bus publishing block then I will go to the uh, bus configuration I will enable the publishing and there is a pre-definition of bus ID name is a G. I can keep that configure revision will I keep one and uh, the MAC address I will keep as default here now I change to the subscribing relay I need to just put these signals into use and download the relay and I can receive the goose message finally I can configure the matrix so I will go to matrix I can see the goose signals in end of the matrix they are named from NI1 to 64 and for NI1 we will have the digital input 1 so I will connect that to LED A uh, non latched so once the goose signal is activated it will lit up the LED the second task was to block the overcurrent stage I will go to the block matrix we have the all current start and trip and I can block that from the goose second signal so if I put block here I will block the over current function from the other relay starting and, and block protection trip of this relay Thank you for watching this movie and for further information about the Schneider products please visit our web page schneider-electric.com